Good morning, One Life. I appreciate everybody taking time out of their busy schedule to join us for our weekly conference call. Uh, we will have some real good stuff going on today. Uh, once again, just as a reminder, everyone's lines are muted and will remain muted until the question and answer portion of the phone call, which will come at the very end of the session. We have David Bowles with us today and Brother Bill Buckley. Looking forward to some real good stuff. Uh, you know, the reason we have this call is just to keep everybody plugged in um, on what's happening with One Life from week to week. Uh, top Gun's going on. Got some real good stuff we're going to cover. But first, I want to kick us off with a devotional. And uh, David Bowles is going to give us our devotional this morning, bring word to us. David has been with One Life for 27 years. He's an agency director and manager with One Life and has 20-plus active current agents. Uh, he attends the Evangel Temple and on Sunday mornings plays the drums uh, for the music program, does a fantastic job. He's just a, he's a man of God. Um, so, David Bowles, if you will, take away for our devotional. When David asked me to do this, the uh, first thing I did was look up the word devotional, and uh, it said, a profound dedication to a person or a cause. And if, it's a, if, it, if, if the Word of God is profound in your life, then it's going to make you act. And that takes me to James 1, 19 through 27, and it says, But be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any among you seem religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion, though, and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And uh, last, Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, what those, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. Uh, just want to have a short prayer. Father, Lord, help us to be dedicated to you. Help it be profound in our life, Lord, that each that we visit, each that we see, every agent, every client, that they would see you in us. And we'll give you the, the praise and the honor. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Thank you very much, Dave. Appreciate those words. And I'm uh, going to go through a little marketing update real quick, as I normally do each each week. Uh, two weeks in the rears on production, so for the week of 915 through 919, uh, as, as a One Life company, we wrote $521,567 of submitted annual premium for that week. Agent of the Week was KT Tyler with $19,548. Running through the top ten, number two, Nigel Johnson with $16,794 of premium. William Jackal, $12,983. Dustin Oberheim, $12,054. Brian Powell Sr., $11,311 of submitted premium. Robin Cano with 9387 Colby Barrett, $8,473 of submitted annual premium. Mark Hamilton, $7,922 of submitted annual premium. Steve Gamertzfelder, $7,245. And rounding out the top 10, Shane Burnett with $7,223 
of submitted AP. Reminder, that's a, uh, <clears throat> this is our top gun contest we got going on. We're kicking into week two this week, so I hope everybody is fired up for a strong week to finish uh, the top gun contest. $5,000 goes out to the first place, $3,000 to second place, $2,000 cash money to, to the third place, $1,000 to fourth place, and rounding out the top five, there will be a $500 bonus to the fifth place person. And also anybody who breaks $40,000 of submitted AP during those two weeks uh, will get an additional $1,000 bonus. Um, we do not forget our distinguished clubs as we are rolling into the fourth quarter. Our next call will be next Monday, and uh, we'll be in our fourth quarter of the year. Uh, the year is slipping right by us. But we have the, uh, the President's Club, the Founders Club, the Leaders Club. Um, you know, the, you need 150000 to submit an annual premium to make the Leaders Club in the trip. You need two... Um, 225000 a submitted annual premium to make the President's Club, get the trip and the sales ring, and the Founders Club with 300000 a submitted annual premium. That gets you the trip, sales ring, and a Rolex watch. So uh, make sure that you uh, are keeping an eye on where you are in the course of the year and how things are going and uh, you know making your way that direction toward the distinguished clubs. Um, Next on the agenda, I want to mention the Academy coming up and the Leadership Summit. Uh, we do have the Academy on October the 6th through the 8th. That's one week from the day. And the Leadership Summit starts the evening of the 6th. So uh, we'll have those two things that are going on. And we're really looking forward to, uh, to that as well. And uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be a real great event. Make sure you have your agents keyed in, your new agents for the Academy. Leaders in our company, managers in our company, make sure that, uh, uh, you know, you, if you can't attend, please be here. There's a fantastic lineup, and you don't want to miss it. You'll be sorry that you did. Get plugged into our social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Make sure that you're hooked up with One Life. You can text to the number 40404. Follow one Life America, O N E L I F E A M E R I C A, all lowercase and together. One Life America is all lowercase and together. You'll receive daily updates, uh, conference call information, so you'll have that readily available right there on your phone. Uh, for the meat and potatoes of today's call, uh, I'm very excited to have Mr. Bill Buckley, brother Bill Buckley, uh, with us on the call. Uh, Mr. Bill is the Director of Fellowship of Christian Athletes for Mississippi State University. Uh, he serves with his fantastic wife, Miss um, Mary, uh, with the, on that board. Uh, he was an all-star wide receiver while he played football at Mississippi State University, and he played at the N NFL ranks. Um, and he was a professional athlete, uh, just a friend of one life. We're always excited to have Bill with us. And I'm trying to find his number here so I can unmute his line. And as soon as I do, I believe I have it. Uh, Brother Bill, do I have you on the phone with us this morning? I'm here. All right, Brother Bill. Thank you so much for joining our call. And uh, we're excited to hear what's uh, laid on your heart to share with us today. Okay, David. Hey, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope that uh, you're doing well. I hope that uh, you're going to have a great week uh, and all that you're doing with One Life. Uh, hey, I just want to start by uh, telling you, I'm from Mississippi, so you know I know a junkyard dealer. I do. I know a guy that runs a junkyard, and uh, he's got all kinds of old cars in there. I mean, he's got hundreds of old cars in there. And before you make a judgment on getting on that guy, uh, let it be known that he's a millionaire. He's a multi, multi-millionaire, and he makes so much money on recycling, uh, especially old cars. And I was talking to him about his old cars and just looking out there on acres and acres of those things, and I said, man, where did they come from? And he made a comment that I've never forgotten. He said, it's the grind that gets them, the grind that gets them. And thinking about talking to you one life people this morning, you know, I'm thinking I know enough about the business to know that if you don't make it uh, with one life, a lot of times it's the grind that gets you, isn't it? It's the grind of having to make another phone call 
and another visit. It's the grind of being told no again. It's the grind of getting up and starting it all over every day and pressing ahead. And if you can't defeat the grind, you can't make it. And even if you do defeat the grind, it's always there. It's relentless, isn't it? Because that's really what life is all about. It's about the grind. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you briefly this morning about uh, uh, overcoming the grind. And uh, some of you, if you've ever heard me talk before, you, you, you know that I talk about the difference in being motivated and being inspired. And, and I think that that's a, that's a, a relevant topic this morning as we talk about the grind. You know, I just uh, listened to that list of rewards that uh, can come to you for uh, the right amount of sales. Uh, but I really believe that those rewards will not see you through to the greatest potential of your life. Uh, they can motivate you. They can pull you out of the grind for a season. But I really believe that uh, to, to really defeat the grind of life and reach the greatness that God has for you, there's got to be something beyond the reward uh, of, of watches and trips and money. So I just want to talk a little bit about this morning, a little bit about the difference in motivation and inspiration and the difference in your dreams and your purpose. And uh, I really believe as I, pl as I work with these athletes, I hear how many of you know that in, on our football team at Mississippi State, about 99% of our guys think they're going to play in the NFL. It's a dream of theirs. And there's nothing wrong with that dream, but a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm asking these guys about, well, I'm asking them the why of their life, W-H-Y, the why of their life. Why do you want to play in the NFL? And uh, a lot of them uh, talk about money or, or fame or uh, whatever, and, uh, but a lot of times they struggle with that real purpose and that real why. So I have a question for you this morning. Why do you want to be a top salesperson with one life? What is the purpose of that? And uh, I think dreams are great to make a lot of money, to take care uh, of your family financially, to, to be uh, whatever you've been called to be. I think that's great. But I, I do believe that, that – uh, one of the things that Bill Buckley missed in his life was the why of my life or the purpose of my life uh, because I was a very motivated football player. But, you know, motivation without inspiration is just going to wear you down. And uh, it, it, there's got to be something in my life that is, is pressing me way past uh, the material rewards that I get. I think of Pat Tillman. Uh, a guy who was moved by a love of his country to leave a successful NFL career and become a soldier. And if you remember, he died in Afghanistan in the heat of battle. But that guy was all about a purpose, the love of his country and the protection of his country. Dr. Martin Luther King, he was moved to become the face of the civil rights movement because of the suffering of his people. And he died in battle too. But I want to tell you, the grind of life didn't get him. He was uh, way past motivation. He was inspired to love and take care of uh, the people that he saw uh, uh, in, in our culture who were not equal or not looked at as equal. How about Mary April, a young girl that I met here in high school uh, at a, one of our local high schools, she was moved to become a doctor and work with poor people in northern Africa, had no money to get in med school. Somehow, miraculously, she is in North Africa right now uh, serving as a doctor, helping people who have never had a doctor. That is just so powerful. And in closing, I just want to remind you that, that uh, hey, dreams are great. I hope you've got a bunch of them. But a dream without a purpose is going to cause the grind to get you sooner or later. And I believe that a purpose does three things. 
it serves other people, it honors God, and it leaves a great legacy. And Proverbs 19, 21, uh, the Bible says, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. And that's such great news for us as we get plugged in to who we're called to be and what we're called to be about and why we're doing what we're doing uh, just right out of the heart of God. So that's my prayer for you as you, as you uh, enter the grind again today that you remember not only your dreams, but what is God's purpose for you? What is that deeper thing that will carry you past any adversity? Everybody is uh, muted, but you can hit star six to unmute yourself. I uh, want to find Brother Bill one more time. I'm going to unmute his line so that if you have any questions, uh, you can fire away at Brother Bill. Anybody have any questions, hit star six and ask Mr. Bill Buckley. Bill, i got a question for you. It, do you have any one particular instance, and I know you, you kind of mentioned some things, but uh, that, that where you, you thought the grind was going to get you and, and you, you pushed on through it, whether it be in, in your educational days, your football days at Mississippi State or in the NFL, uh, mm-hmm. did you ever think that there was a part when the, a time when the grind was just going to put you down, but you, you motivated yourself to get on through it? Wow, yeah, probably probably several times. I, I think uh, one of the times that was most meaningful to me was uh, in my, my own marriage, uh, in the early years of my marriage, and uh, me just trying to find my identity and grow up as a uh, uh, husband and a father. And just, the, you know, when you, you, you marry and all the excitement of marriage wears off, and, and now you've got you've got kids and you're having financial struggles and the the heat is always on. I I think during those early years, the the first three to five years of our marriage, uh, I think Mary and I both felt the heat of the grind in in some powerful ways uh, right there. But one thing I didn't say is I, I feel like sometimes the desperation of the grind is what we need to push us to the brink of hunger for God. And uh, that's what it did for me. It's going to push you towards something. And uh, for us, it pushed us toward a, a deeper relationship with God. But that was one significant time. Absolutely. Do we have any questions for Mr. Buckley? Star six to unmute your phone. Mr. Buckley, a quick question that, for you. Yes, go ahead. When... You know, I can understand working on yourself, but when you're working with others, okay, so you got other people on your team and you're trying to coach them up and, and get them headed in the right direction, how do you how do you bring them along with the same passion and oh. and things that, that you have yourself? You know, being, coming from an athletic background, I'm sure you've encountered that as well. Mm-hmm. That's a great question. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, one of if I could just say that, uh, if I could just give you, if I could just put my per- my purpose statement in in one sentence, it would be to rescue people from mediocrity into the greatness of a life with Jesus Christ. That's kind of what that's kind of my purpose. And I think for all of us who are serving others and leading others, that's not a bad mission statement right there. That we're asking God and others and being trained, and I think this is one thing one life really wants to do. How can we do that? How can we help other people just reach past the rewards of material rewards to, to, to that place of greatness? And uh, I don't know that we have a lot of time to discuss the practicalities of that, but I, I just uh, fall in love with the people that you serve, that you lead, and, and, and uh, asking God to give you his burden for them so that when you're connecting with them, it's not just about motivation, it's about reaching their hearts. And the element of trust in the middle of all that is just huge because we live in an uh, era where I believe there's a lot of lack of trust everywhere you look. But building that credibility through trust with the people that we serve is really powerful, and trust reaches the heart. 
that's kind of a general statement more than specific. But that's that's good stuff, I, and and I I definitely agree that uh, that it it is a an untrusting world out there. At one point in time, I worked with a youth group at my church, and I talked to an evangelist and shared the struggles that I had with uh, the youth group, and he told me to be very transparent to to let them see uh, my vulnerable side, and and they will. Mm-hmm. It, that you can gain trust in that way. Let them know that you're human, that you've been there, that you've done that uh, in, in our business, that you're mm-hmm. in the field of production and produce uh, in, in production, producing, working out there every week, and yeah. rolling your sleeves up and getting the job done, and, and just being very transparent, and, and that that will help gain trust as well. And, and you know that's so true, David. And just for that gentleman's question again, you know. Um, really connecting with people on a level beyond the superficial. How many people do you know in your life that when you meet with them or you talk with them, they're probably not fully engaged? You know, they're maybe glancing at their cell phone or maybe they they seem a little bit distracted, but they're, it's very rare to talk to anybody that is fully present with you and focused on you. And I think that's one of the most powerful things that you can do to reach somebody's heart is just to be present with them and to find that time in all the busyness to try to connect on that level that's not superficial. And, and, you know, I'm not talking about holding hands and singing hymns. I'm just talking about being present with that person and having a burden for who they are and what's going on with them. You can't fake that. Mm. Good stuff. Do we have any more questions for Mr. Bill Buckley? Brother Bill, I want to thank you once again. I, for we, uh, Two weeks in a row, I tried to talk with the mute button going on here. Uh, I mentioned last week it's like control central with uh, everything going on, trying to run this call from a desk. But uh, I want to thank you so much for, for being part of today's call, some good substance. You know, that grind is out there. You're going to face it every day, but you've got to push through it. And the motivation without inspiration, that's that's. That's a strong phrase right there. You have to be inspired along with your motivation uh, Mm -hmm. to push through that grind. So thank you so much uh, for being on the call today. Brother Bill, watch for Moore's Motivational Monday video in the next 20 minutes. We're going to have it available for you to see. I'll shoot an email out. Um, And I I thank everybody, again, for being on the call. Uh, For those of you who are in the Top Gun contest, finish strong. You've got a full week to go. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.